Here we're going to talk about sublimation and deposition. So what is sublimation and deposition? Well, simply said, sublimation is the phase change from solid to vapor. So that you have a solid, instead of going from a solid first to a liquid, and from a liquid to a vapor, it goes directly from a solid to the vapor. And the opposite, deposition, is the phase change from vapor back to solid. So there are a few substances that do do that. Even water, or I should say water ice, can sublimate. For example, a piece of ice can sit there open to the atmosphere at sub-freezing temperatures and slowly molecules from the ice will, in a way, evaporate from the ice directly into a vapor form. It does that at a low rate, but it can happen. It does happen. But one of the champions at going from solid to vapor is carbon dioxide. So let's take a closer look at carbon dioxide. And here I have a phase diagram for carbon dioxide, at least a partial phase diagram, which shows a relationship between what we would call solid carbon dioxide and vapor carbon dioxide. So notice our phase diagram here, where we have this relationship between solid carbon dioxide and vapor carbon dioxide. And also notice that the, the way the pressure at which this happens does depend upon the temperature, or vice versa, the temperature which it happens does depend upon the pressure. That may be a better relationship. So notice that at one atmosphere, at, so that would be the atmospheric pressure of the Earth, uh, vapor carbon dioxide will turn into solid carbon dioxide if the temperature drops below 78.5 degrees. But that's a little bit misleading. The reason why that's a little bit misleading is it doesn't depend upon the total atmospheric pressure. It does depend on the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And for the Earth, there's not a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, so the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is very, very low. So assuming that we put carbon in a container, or carbon dioxide, I should say, in a container, in a vapor form, and let's say that the container is completely filled with carbon dioxide, and now we apply pressure to that, then we can assume, of course, that we start out at one atmospheric pressure, and then if we cool it down, down to 78.5 degrees, that carbon dioxide will turn into a solid at one atmosphere. But on the Earth, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is only 0 0.0004 atmospheres. So it would have to get down to 140 degrees below zero centigrade for vapor carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, to actually precipitate out like snow and fall down to the Earth. Never does it get that cold on the Earth anywhere, not even in the Antarctic, not even in the coldest place of the world, so we'll never on the Earth see carbon dioxide precipitate out as snow and fall down to the ground. But it does happen on Mars. On Mars, the total atmospheric pressure is much lower than the Earth. It's about 0.6% of the atmospheric pressure on the Earth, but almost all of that is carbon dioxide. So you can say that approximately the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the Martian atmosphere is about 0 0.006 atmospheres, which means that at a temperature of 128 degrees below zero centigrade degrees, the carbon dioxide vapor will indeed turn into solid carbon dioxide. So on places on Mars where in the wintertime, near the poles, it gets so cold that the temperature drops below this temperature, minus 128 degrees centigrade, and carbon dioxide will actually precipitate out of the atmosphere and fall down to the ground like snow. And so the polar ice caps will build up over the winter time, but instead of building up with water ice, they build up with carbon dioxide ice. So they get much bigger in the winter time because of the precipitation of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And then in the summertime, in the spring and summertime, it sublimates again. There it goes directly from the solid form of carbon dioxide back to the vapor phase of carbon dioxide and disappear again into the atmosphere. And this is, happens every winter and every summer at both poles on Mars. So again, it does depend upon the temperature and the pressure. So sublimation occurs. There's a number of substances that sublimate, not a lot. There's a number of substances that then deposition again when the temperature gets cold enough. And again, it all depends on the partial pressure of that vapor in the atmosphere. Not the total pressure, because that's quite often misunderstood. We always think about the, the temperature at which uh, carbon dioxide sublimates on the Earth as being minus 78.5 degrees centigrade, because we associate that with a pressure of one atmosphere. But it's incorrect to assume that it depends on the total atmospheric pressure. It only depends on the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide vapor in the atmosphere but that controls the amount of sublimation. So on the Earth, the temperature which it happens is minus 140 degrees centigrade, not minus 78.5. And the way they do turn carbon dioxide 
into solid carbon dioxide is typically by cooling it to a very, very low temperature, minus this, assuming that the partial pressure is entirely the atmospheric pressure in that particular container. Here we have the enthalpy of sublimation, which is the amount of energy required, because it does require energy, to turn solid carbon dioxide into uh, vapor carbon dioxide or any substance for that matter. So when you want to sublimate something, it does require energy. How much energy does it take? Well, it is equal to the sum of the enthalpy of vaporization plus the enthalpy of fusion. So it's kind of interesting. It just kind of combines the two energies and does it all at once, but it does require the total energy of the two. And so in the case of water, sublimating water from ice directly into vapor, it would take this much for the vaporization, this much for the fusion, add them together. That is the enthalpy of sublimation for water, just to give you an example. So that it does have to, it does require the total amount of energy to go through both phase changes, but it does it all at once. And that's how it goes.